Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson, BamaInsider.com. Thank you for watching. Today, we're going to break down Alabama's practice from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, as well as hit on some hot topics such as Antonio Alfano, who hasn't been at practice since Monday, Christian Harris, who looks like he's dealing with a nagging knee injury. But before we get into it, think about becoming a premium subscriber to BamaInsider.com. Get quality content you deserve from reporters that are in Tuscaloosa reporting from inside the practice facility, reporting from Bryant Denny Stadium. Don't get your news from someone sitting on the couch. Get quality content. Think about becoming a premium subscriber. Simply go to the website, BamaInsider.com, look for the sign up tab, and enter the promo code Roll Tide and enjoy your free 30 days. All right, let's get into it right away. You got Antonio Alfano, who hasn't been at practice Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Yeah, this is old footage you're looking at from last week. It's going to be interesting to see what pans out with Alfano. Now, from what we've heard and what we've reported on, it's a family issue that is private, and that's why he's been absent from practice. Now, there are rumors circulating in Tuscaloosa that Alfano has exited the program, that he will not be coming back. So Nick Saban speaks on Thursday. We'll keep you posted at BamaInsider.com. Also of note, Christian Harris, who you see right here on your screen, dealing with what looks to be some sort of a knee injury. Now, this took place on Monday evening, and we've been tracking it to see how he's been doing in practice. It slowed him down a little bit. This is earlier footage as well. That's from Saturday. So you're looking at Christian Harris, who jumped up to the first team inside linebacker role, and it looks like he could be dealing with some sort of nagging injury. It doesn't look too serious. So who's behind Christian Harris? Well, it's kind of interesting, and I'm really curious to see why Ali Kaho really hasn't got that call. I mean, as you can see, he has great footwork. Kind of curious about Markel Benton as well. I mean, these are two guys that have been in the program a lot longer than Christian Harris or Shane Lee, who you see right here. By the way, look at this grab right here. And still, you don't hear Markel Benton or Ali Kaho getting their name called. Same with Jalen Moody. So really curious to see who is that linebacker that is starting next to Dylan Moses come week one against the Duke Blue Devils. Here's a nice scoop right there by Mark Markel Benton. Also had an opportunity to look at the outside linebackers. Now, this is still footage from Monday. And as you can see, Chris Allen is really starting to move well. And I think he's a guy who's going to provide some good pass rush. But as you can see in this footage, where's Anthony Jennings? He's another guy that has been off to the side during media viewing period. Um, Terrell Lewis has been limited, but it looks like he's going to be 100% come game time. There he is at the front of your screen, followed by Chris Allen. And there's King Makuta, who Nick Saban had a lot of positives to say, followed by Jerez Parks. And then there's Ben Davis. And... Uh, Kevin Harris there at the end. So outside linebackers looking really good. Now what's going to happen with Alabama's offensive line? It looks like we're getting closer to, to figuring out who the best five are. There's Landon Dickerson. He's a monster. Uh, grad transfer from Florida State there working with Kyle Flood. And as you can see, and as you've heard, it looks like Dickerson is going to get an opportunity at the center position for Alabama. There's Jedrick Wills Jr., who's Alabama's returning All-American tackle. But I really like that Alabama has Dickerson at that center position. I think it's going to provide some good experience, and that's a great push block right there by Judgic Wills. Um, looks fantastic, by the way. Here's a couple other guys next in line. I believe that's Tommy Brown, number 75, uh, they're following. But I, I do like Alabama's offensive line and, and how it's coming together. It looks like it's going to be Jedrick Wills at the tackle position. And then that guard position looks like it could be Emil Yiki or then center Dickerson. Um, and then you got uh, Evan Neal and Alex Leatherwood on the other side. Also got a chance to see some of the big boys on the defensive side of the ball. Now, this is on practice on Tuesday. These are some of the younger guys. Um, you know, there's Ismail Sopcher right there in front of your screen, number 95. He's He's been making a lot of progress since the first time that um, we saw him back in those dog days of the beginning of August. It was so hot. And he's a big dude, and I, I hope he gets onto the field. I don't know how much he'll play this coming season, but I think with his body type and just with what he brings to the table, it's going to be hard to keep him off the field. As you can see, there's no Antonio Alfano, uh, number 52 right there. That's Braylon Ingram, who's been coming around, and there's 58, Christian Barmore. This group has been working and connecting well with Brian Baker. Nick Saban said that Brian Baker has done a great job really connecting with this group. Um, here's that first group right there. And as you can see, it looks like LeBron Ray just is not 100%, right? Um, I'm going to have another clip of him coming up, I, I believe, and 
just doesn't seem like he's close to 100%, which is concerning going into the start of the season. There's Justin, Justin Abogbe there at the end and Tavita Musica. Um, big dude has been always, he's always been working hard. Um, here are some of the younger guys again. Um, this is Byron Young and Ismail Sopcher. Those two have been repping um, hand in hand this summer and they look good and um, there's a good shot of Bra Braylon Ingram right here. Three freshmen who are, who are coming along. I mean, are they going to see playing time this year? Who knows? Um, it, it seems like they're behind in terms of, you know, the talent compared to LeBron Ray, Raekwon Davis, um, DJ Dell. But I think eventually those guys are going to get their shot. Here's Raekwon Davis and a guy that is certainly expected to have a monster year. Let's face it. I mean, this is a money year for him. We've said it again and again. He's got to get to the quarterback. He's got to prove that he can get to the quarterback. And I think this is great news for Alabama fans. There's DJ Dell, as you can see, has a brace on his left knee. He dealt with a sprained knee early in fall camp. But he looks great. I think he's 100%. I think he's going to be ready to roll. I think he's going to have a monster year for Alabama. I think, you know, the, the depth – for this group isn't probably where I'd like it. I feel more confident looking at the offensive line, for example, but um, a lot's going to depend on the health of this guy right here, LeBron Ray. I think when you talk breakout players for the 2019 season, he has to be circled on the defense just from what he brings from a physicality standpoint. Looked very good in spring, looked good last year. And, uh, you know, if he can get healthy, uh, LeBron Ray and that front unit are going to do some damage. Here's um, some additional footage right here of the offensive line this is also from tuesday that's matt womack he's another guy that's going to provide really good leadership and depth to this offensive line you know i mean i i think overall the offense that's darian dalcourt by the way number 71 i think one of the question marks coming into the season is how is this offensive line going to shake up and i think we've seen this offensive line really turn into something special even before the season started that's a million EQR it looks like he's going to start at guard and here is uh Chris Owens who is right now battling with Dickerson for that center position another I mean look at that combo right Chris Owens and Matt Womack two guys who could certainly do the job if if they were starters so I think the offensive line great depth I think Kyle Flood the way he coaches really does a great job with these guys. You never see these big boys standing around at all. I mean, they're always moving, always working. There's Deontay Brown to your left. He's been doing great. Remember, even though he misses those four games, he's going to come back. There's Look at Dickerson right there in the center of your screen with, the, with Evan Neal. Talk about a power combo. Um, that would be fantastic. There's uh, Owens again right there, center of your screen. But I think when you look at Dickerson and... Evan Neal, Neal at the guard position and Dickerson at center. You're going to be able to push back mountains. Darian Dalcourt, by the way, has done a great job. I think he's, I had him in the rankings and lower end when I ranked all those freshmen, but he's a guy who just continues to jump out. Here's Dickerson. Look at that. Dickerson and Evan Neal. Can you imagine Najee Harris or Brian Robinson running behind those guys, right? Here's a shot of the quarterbacks. This is still footage from Tuesday. There's Devontae Smith. There's Jay. Jerry Judy, here is Terrell Shavers, looks great. He's been having a strong fall camp. There is Xavier Williams, he's going to get on the field. A lot of these guys are going to get on the field. I mean, there's just so much talent at the receiver position. I think offensive line, the receivers, the secondary, those are groups that have just tremendous depth. Here's Tua. He's going to connect with... That's Henry Ruggs on the outside, number 11. Henry Ruggs, I'm Henry Ruggs, Devontae Smith, Jerry Jude. It's, a, it's incredible to watch this unit work. Uh, there's Slade Bolden getting the pass from Mac Jones. And here's Talia Tungovaloa. And that's John Mechie. I mean, the, the list goes on and on, right? It's, uh, it's awesome to watch. And there's uh, other quarterbacks in the back. That's uh, Paul Tyson and um, Barker. There's another pass from Tua right there, hooking up with Ruggs. I mean, there's nothing really to say, I mean, about the receiving group other than get them the football and let's see what they can do and let's see how many points they can score. And this guy, I think, is going to have a big year. That's Miller Forrestal. He looks healthy. He he dealt with a injury over the summertime. That's Major Tennyson. He was the guy who was repping with the ones before Forrestal came back. Here's to Leo right here. He's going to hook up with Cameron, the two. He's the freshman who transitioned from outside linebacker back to tight end. 
And there is Jahil Billingsley, who we've talked about plenty. This is footage from Wednesday. Got a chance to see Alabama as they moved indoor. Here is Tua hooking up right there with Najee Harris. Najee Harris. We've talked about it before, right? 230 pounds. Here's another back that's 230 pounds. I mean, those guys, you got to get the ball to those guys early on against Duke. And I, I think they could really cause trouble for not only Duke, but every single opponent on the team. There's uh, Kellen Robinson now working as the number three running back with Jerome Ford being out with an ankle injury and then Trey Sanders done indefinitely, according to Nick Saban. How many yards for Najee Harris, right? A thousand? You think he's going to break a thousand yards? How many yards for B-Rob? Is B-Rob going to get, you know, 700, 600? That's a lot of yards from, from an offense, right? Because you still have all those wide receivers. What are your thoughts of Kellen Robinson? It looks like, uh, you know, he's been, he's been putting in the work. And as Nick Saban has said, you know, a few times this fall training camp that Kellen Robinson and uh, he said that Trey Sanders was coming along well, but it looks like Robinson now is going to get his number called being that the depth of that position has been cut down. And then you also have Chateris Townsend, who has been working with the running backs, although we don't see him in any of these clips right here. He has been moved from receiver to running back a couple times and did it in the springtime. And uh, Chadarius Townsend did it again, um, moved again to running back by Nick Saban. Here's Najee Harris. And the importance of catching the football out of the backfield is going to be really important for this group because it's going to just open up another dimension for the offense. And Sarkeesian talked about that during his press conference. There's a ball that should have been scooped up, but killing Robinson. And here are, the, here are the running backs now. We're going to get a chance to see them up close in just a second, working with Charles Huff. There's Brian Robinson up at the top, followed by, let's see, is that, yeah, that's Townsend. And as I, as I said, here's a, Kellen Robinson up next. So you got you got to think Townsend and Robinson going to get their number called just because of the depth. Here's some more footage of these guys. And, and Brian Robinson has just looked, you know, if you talk MVP during fall camp, I mean, you could probably mention his name. I think he's just one guy who has shined in both scrimmages, has looked great, has kept, looked the part, has done everything that the coaches needed him to do, continuing to merge into that running back role. And I'm really excited to see him play this year. I just can't wait to see – uh, you know, all that hard work be transitioned out into the football field. Here's another opportunity to look at the alignment. I got a chance just to want to get this clip in there. That's um, that is Alex Leatherwood and Judge Wills, right? Working hand in hand. This is the first time today that I really saw Kyle Flood with a lot of intensity. Not to say that he doesn't have intensity during practice, but I saw him, you know, yelling at his players and getting fired up. And, and actually, now that I think about it, it was a whole different mindset at practice. You could just feel it, right? I think they're really dialed in. I think, you know, they know they're approaching game week. It's, it's about time to hit someone else. So you could really see a, a strong focus of emphasis from Kyle Flood today. It really stood out to me. That was the first time I've really seen him raise his voice and really get after his players, which I like. I, I think, as I said earlier, you know, he's done a great job really coaching these guys up. Here's the running backs that are working right in front of him. I'm never going to get a chance to see some of these talented wide receivers again. Um, that was Xavier Williams. These guys just work tremendously hard. And I think the the thing that I admire most about this group is they, they read about themselves every day in ESPN, or they could, or on our side, or wherever. And it doesn't matter. I mean, these guys are still going 100% every single practice. And I, that's what I ex admire most about, especially a player like Jerry Judy, he, you know, a returning Bolitnikoff Award winner, but, you know, setting the stage for these younger guys. Here's Jalen Waddle, another guy who should have a monster season. There's Cam Latou on the other side again. Just a great group of, of young men who have really paid their dues, continue to work hard despite the accolades that they've already earned that they're going to earn these are all americans these are nfl draft picks here's henry ruggs who uncharacteristically drops a pass there but hey got to practice right i mean it happens i mean who hasn't missed a block or an assignment during practice doesn't matter you just got to have a short memory and, and make sure that it doesn't happen in the game that's why they call it practice right there's slade bolden who's having a big year i'd like to see slade bolden get a couple reps Along with this young man, John Matchy, I'd like to see them get into the field this year. But also, you know, you, you kind of want selfishly, if you're an Alabama fan, to, to make sure these guys 
have a couple more years of eligibility, right? You don't want them to burn that freshman card just playing a couple games. But with the new rule, these guys can play four games, four full games, and still keep their eligibility. I think that's a great factor for the Alabama factory who's just, look at this ball right there. We're going to see so much of that this year, right? I mean, it's uh, it's about that time. <laughs> Here's Mac Jones putting it on. And uh, a couple more clips before we're going to wrap this up. Here's Talia. Wanted to just get a couple more clips of these quarterbacks before we wrap it up. And then, as I said, Nick Saban's going to talk again on Thursday. We're going to catch up on the injury updates. We're going to catch up on um, – we'll see if he says anything on Antonio Alfano. Maybe this is just a private matter and, you know, he'll be back at practice. And hopefully he is. There's, look at that. That was a rope, right, to Smitty across the middle of the field. So we got a lot of coverage back at BamaInsider.com. I just wanted to jump on here and provide some practice observations. I, I think – and I, and I feel strongly that adding these practice observations in, in one big piece during the week will be much more beneficial than me just talking every single day. It could get redundant. So I wanted to kind of put everything together, talk about how things are going position by position. If you like this video and you like our coverage, please be sure and give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe, most importantly. And if you want quality content, head on over to BamaInsider.com. Sign up for the free 30 days. Would really appreciate an opportunity to earn your business. And um, we'll catch you soon at BamaInsider.com. All this footage right here from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. You're watching Alabama football on our YouTube channel. Thank you for being here. We'll catch you soon at BamaInsider.com.